Right. So you're brave. Well, now's the choice. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. I guess you took the red pill. Okay, here's the real kicker. When twisting, most people twist in the only place on their body that they're not designed to. Yeah, they're turning and burning. Yeah, burning at the stake. Burning out their discs and possible crippling back pain makes the twist a crucial pattern to learn. I'm gonna go out on a limb here. The lack of learning about this movement and this plane in general, I think causes the most injuries. Balls rotate in sockets. And do you know where the two most important ball and socket joints are in the body? The shoulders and the hips. Well, actually, they're the only ball and socket joints in the body, but... And rotation is the first thing to go when these two joints have a problem, and that affects the joints that they're connected to. The elbows, hands, spine, knees and feet. If your shoulder and hip don't rotate correctly, then your body's gonna go rooting around in all the other joints for that rotation. Now, those joints will rotate a little, but they don't have the stomach for a lot of twisting and turning, you know. And visualize the spine as more like a pyramid Rubik's cube with a fixed base. You get the most rotation at the top and the least rotation at the bottom. You don't want the base of the pyramid moving. This ain't X-Men Apocalypse. Apocalypse, when you rotate at the waist, it's the end of the world. So when you enroll in twist school, you're trying to encourage pro-rotation at the top and control rotation at the bottom, which I call iso-rotation. Now this is wonderfully illustrated by these two different ways of doing a landmine. Let's twist again, like we did last summer. Yeah, let's twist again. And there goes my back in the demo. You want the thoracic part of the spine to rotate, and you want the lumbar part of the spine to resist the rotation. Basically, the spine is a spectrum of rotational movement. Most at the top, least at the bottom. Okay, hit it. So right there, you've got two different skills that you need to master. Encouraging a high degree of cervical and thoracic rotation, and minimizing lumbar rotation. Now there are three groups of people that need to master this. Sports people, people who want to look good naked, and people in pain. And if you don't fit into one of these groups, then you've the devil in you. Now this skill is essential in sports performance. If you can't control the bottom, you get leakage. If you can't produce from the top, you're missing out on power. It's also vital for aesthetics. If you don't have iso-rotation, you end up with a wide waist and small hips, which destroys your hip to waist ratio, making you look more overweight than you really are. Now, I'm not trying to say that learning to twist is spot reduction, but tightening up that area is gonna have a measurement reducing effect on your waist. And finally, back pain. If you're getting uncontrolled, unwarranted rotation of the lower spine, you're setting yourself up for sharp, stabbing, low back pain. Now, a lot of twist exercises over the years have been given the label dangerous. Last week on Aesop's Dangerous Exercises, we revealed Russian twists. This week, we'll rendezvous with barbell rotations. And next week, we'll be wondering at windmills. No! It's when you touch your toes. I, I can't work this hand anymore. You're a bunch of mother But it's because people were fixing their pelvis and then doing all kinds of rotation through their lower lumbers. But here's the answer to that problem. One, the exercises can be done while keeping the belly button centered by controlling the rotation. Or two, you can rotate into the hips, which is the equivalent of keeping the belly button centered relative to the torso. And learning and practicing how to rotate with the hips, knees, and feet is a crucial life skill. As you internally and externally rotate into the hips, the glute mins and meads can stretch and shorten, meaning that your glutes get round and shapely, and your waist can stay svelte, svet, some sort of Swedish word. Get the hips to rotate, that's what they're paid for. If they're drinking on the job, then the lower lumbers have to take over, and if they do the twisting, that causes shearing forces. And if your discs are a little bit deflated, that's back pain. 
Mastering anti-rotation in the low back and perfecting pro-rotation in the upper back and hips is the key to a strong core, an hourglass figure and less back pain. And it doesn't matter if you're just trying to get that shopping trolley around the corner, look nice in your bikini, keep your pants up or be the greatest at sport. You're gonna have to get to Esme Street. Now rotation is built on the foundation of pull, so as always, retract the scaps. Next, there are three different categories of rotation. Pro-rotation, where you move the top, but you don't move the waist. Example, ten finger touches, Russian twists, gladiators, pull rotations. Anti-rotations, where you focus on not moving the waist. So, plank with one arm off the floor, Pavlov press, one arm dumbbell chest press, tripod row. And pro-upper rotation, anti-lumbar rotation, pro-hip rotation, like wood chops, gladiators, landmines, long pole twists. The only thing we're not doing is swiveling the old in or outy. Okay, so let's play a game. Three of these things are quite like the other. Three of these things are kind of the same. But one of these things just doesn't belong here. Now it's time to play our game. It's time to play our game. The universe has supplied endless variations, so once I've finished this hard hip hinge series, I'm on easy street. I'm just producing exercise videos of the week. I'm just going to be sitting back and letting the money roll in from AdSense. Yeah, that's my 14p a month on hookers and blow. My comment section is just going to be full of, wow, that's an amazing exercise. How'd you come up with that? Definitely going to try that in the gym. But all the rotational exercises come from understanding the basic concept. And the skill of being able to do it well is a lot more important than the weight that you lift initially. The weight is just a variable that will increase long down the line. Focus on what your body does to your belly button when you change the variables. Is it the same left to right? Analyze it for yourself. Now finally, we get to the footwork of the twist. Now, it's not as complex as this. <laughs> But it's important because these lateral anatomical structures need to be stretched dynamically in order to keep them healthy, and rotation does this. Practice internally rotating into the hip while keeping the weight on the outside of the foot. Initially, line the foot up with the knee, but over time, to increase the dynamic stretch, Invert the foot. Preload that flat right foot. The left foot has toes up. Then externally rotate the hip of the left foot. Transfer the weight from one side to the other, moving the hips and fixing the belly button. Land with a flat left foot, contract the glute of the right foot and keep the heel off the floor. I prefer rotation into and out of the hip because it actually sets you up for the room that you need to do the actual hip hinge. But also, if you're struggling to hip hinge, it could be because you haven't learned to rotate. And before you learn to rotate with your hips, you need to learn to anti-rotate with your core. So don't be a grouch. If you like the vid, hit the thumbs up, have your say in the comments bay, and if you like my vibe, please subscribe. <laughs> See if you've learned to rotate, nothing bad's happened. No.